hit me from places like Tel Aviv. Great software. Seriously, that's all you got? Yeah. <laughs> Are we ready? Do we want to get into that? You can use DNA. Boy, those robots look cool performing. All right, timing attacks in five minutes. That's a challenge. <laughs> so a quick slide about myself. My name is, uh, can you hear me well? Yeah, yeah all right. Uh, my name is Danny. I'm uh, doing security research at Sneak. We're a developer's tool company based here in Tel Aviv and in London, and we're building tools to help developers use open source securely. So what's a timing attack? Simply put, through a timing attack, it is possible to reveal sensitive uh, or secret information based on the time it takes for the server to respond. This might be a little abstract, so let me just give you an example. Suppose we have a banking website named Secret Money, and we want to know if a user named Donald has an account on that website. So we don't want to get access to that account. We just want to know if, the, if, the, if, if he is registered on that website. So like all secure website, it, it has a logging form. And this is a very typical uh, backend code where we just basically check for whether the user exists in the, in the database, fetch the record, and then uh, if it does, we would uh, compare the hash to the calculated hash uh, based on a password provided by the user. Otherwise, uh, we will, yeah, so if it all works, we will give the access. Otherwise, we will uh, return a, a logging failure. So first, if we submit an email that does not exist, we will go through this flow and basically immediately return a uh, logging failure. While if we submit, and yeah, and we measure the time that it takes for this re response to come back. So if we submit the, the other user, the one that exists, Donald in, the, in this case, we'll take the different flow where the user exists, we will fetch the record from the database and we will proceed to verify the password. And as we know, as we don't know the password, the logging will still fail, but measuring the time, uh, it will take slightly longer for the server to respond because there was an extra code executed and mainly the verify password function that does all the hashing typically. So just by measuring the difference between T0 and T1, we revealed that Donald has an account on the secret money website. And I'm of course oversimplifying these examples here just because we don't have enough time to go into the details. But yeah, let's look at another example. And this time we'll look at API token ver uh, verification. And this time we'll actually try to gain access, get the token. So here's a, a simple code. We're taking the token sent by the user and comparing it to the secret token that is stored on the application, on the server. And to do that, we are using the Ruby's compare uh, equals equals operator. We just basically, uh, it does a simple string comparison. So how does equals equals operator work? Uh, let's see how, how, how we compare two, equals two identical strings. So we would iterate, and it's, it's a little simplification here, but we would iterate over a, a character at a time and as long as they are identical, we'll see that the strings are matched. And what if the strings are different? So in this case, we will iterate through the first three characters. But then when we reach the fourth character, we'll see that uh, the strings are not the same. So there is no point in comparing the rest of the strings. So the function just returns false. So what happens here is that uh, we see that the execution time will be different depending on the number of matched characters. And that lets the attacker to reveal the token one character at a time, instead of trying the all possible combinations. So uh, such a vulnerability was actually found in, in uh, REC, in one of the gems of uh, Rails. And it allowed, um, it allowed remote attacker to guess the session cookie and basically gain, gain a remote code execution. So question is, how do we protect? And 
One uh, first thing we could do is to use constant time string comparison when comparing credentials compared provided by the user. So there is such function, uh, it's called secure compare, and it is, uh, yeah, you can see active support. So this function, unlike the equals equals operator, will always take the constant amount of time regardless of, of uh, the inputs. One other thing we could do is to consider doing rate limiting, basically preventing high number of authentication attempts. And lastly, we we, could, we we can first we should make sure not using the not to use gems that uh, have uh, known vulnerabilities. So if you're uh, for some reason still using that vulnerable version of REC, do upgrade. And to make sure that we continuously monitor for uh, your projects for known vulnerabilities in in the third-party code that is gems. And that's all. Thank you.